We're getting close to the seafloor. Okay, excellent. Yeah, so marine snow is what all that white stuff is called. Appel will be uh, yeah, zero nine zero eight zero seven. Yeah, we'll be tracking. Uh, yes, I'm all stopped. Sorry. Okay. Right, so we are approaching the bottom. We're very close. We'll be moving 060 when we're settled. Auto heading is on. There's bottom. Yeah, and yep, on bottom. As you can see in the uh, first camera feed, we have reached the bottom. So we begin exploring. I guess we've been exploring this whole time, technically, but exploring the, the bottom. Vid nav. Or sorry, vid pilot and co pilot. Hi. Hey. Um, no rush, but whenever we are like truly on bottom and ready to get going, probably need to do a auto white balance. shallower than uh, we had anticipated, 29.37. <coughs> So again, online viewers, we have just reached the bottom. We are at a depth of 2,935 meters. So that is, uh, that's almost 10,000 yes. feet yeah. below the surface. Ask you for that. Okay. Okay, there you go. So, again, this is the third dive of NA 153 exploring the 20? Johnston Atoll. You can region. see the yourself below. And while we're here, we are, um, as stated earlier, looking uh, 
at this region in terms of the biological makeup as well as geological. So what kinds of what kinds okay. of biology can we find? We're looking uh, for coral, sponges. We've already seen that some, you know, little shrimp and Harry, set this again. other invertebrates here and there. Um, but yeah. we, we never really know what we're going to be finding. So it's really, really exciting. Again, this is an unexplored seamount. Okay. Um, it's only been mapped before, but it has never been explored with an ROV. And in addition to the biology, we're looking at what kinds of um, geological items are down here too. Rocks. Rocks. <laughs> I'm rocks. trying to use big words like We're looking for rocks. We're looking for rocks. Um, Submarine rocks. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, so we're looking for rocks that can um, hopefully tell us okay. more about the years past in this area. So what was the activity like? I'm happy, yeah. Thousands or even millions of years ago. And we can learn a lot about that by studying the rocks. Yes. <clears throat> well, here's your rock. Yeah. Nick. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> we're actually, uh, That's all we're this is the allotment for today. <laughs> yeah. We're only allowed to see five rocks. There's a lot of pelagic sediment build up in this portion of the seamount. It really bothers me. <laughs> but is it a scratch? Yeah, no, no, it's it's like some goo on the screen or something. Yeah, I was just working through the log, but um, oh, yeah, totally. um, so, uh, yeah, you can Okay. Oh, I see. Sounds great. Oh, yeah. you're not on a copy. Field. Oh. But yeah. Never mind. <laughs> you're one of those people. <laughs> Horse talking. <laughs> Gabby and Karen, if you have a chance, um, there's somebody who wants to know more about how do you learn to control ROVs? Do you have to go to a specific school for that? How did you end up with this position? Uh, stand by for ROV. Brittany. Okay. Yeah, we're uh, still getting settled here on the bottom. Oh, my mistake. Oh, no, don't worry about it. Um, uh, Karen's busy right now, but if you had something you were wondering about, I can answer. Yeah, did you have to go to a specific school to learn how to control ROVs? There are specific schools to learn how to control ROVs. Um, I did not go to one of them. Uh, some people do, some people don't. Um, I learned on the job here um, and with a few other systems. Thanks. Um, but yeah, there's a few schools that teach and do a really excellent job. And I think like, if I had it to do over again, I would have really liked to go to them and get a sp get specialized training and simulator work and stuff like that, that you can do there. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of paths to get here. Okay, so for the white balance, mm -hmm. um,
Right there? Okay. Gabby, what's your uh, DCGF? It is uh, Rudder. No issue. No, that's its name now. <laughs> <laughs> no issue. <laughs> Karen, you're getting a shout out from Martin. Oh, cool. <laughs> Thanks. So what? Yeah, we're uh, gonna head upslope here. So we're at the base of the slope. We're gonna head upslope. Whoop! We're gonna take tracking off. We're gonna head up this slope here to waypoint two. That's about zero six zero, and then we'll head up the ridge to the summit here. We've got 1,900 meters, uh, radiant-wise, yeah. And the Let's find out. So Nick, while we're down here, we're looking for rocks and um, hoping to sample a few. So somebody's wondering what would be the jackpot for a, a rock to a rock sample. Yeah, 900 meters. A uh, jackpot? Yeah. Uh, a basalt made of liquid gold. Solid gold. <laughs> OK. Uh, no, um, we're looking for uh, unaltered um, uh, basalts um, that are fresh from any type of uh, seawater alteration. Um, we won't be able to tell if that's the jackpot rock until uh, long after collecting it, sampling it, and uh, making petrographic uh, slides uh, to determine if there are um, uh, mineral phases appropriate for making age determinations. Um, so those are, those are the ideal rocks that we're looking for. Uh, I don't think there's one, necessarily one particular rock that would, uh, that would say anything uh, perfect, but uh, having more samples is usually ideal as opposed to having one perfect sample. Okay, so I'm hearing unaltered is like the best. Yeah. And what do you mean by unaltered? Uh, so, yeah, over time you can have um, seawater alteration um, cause chemical reactions within the rock. Uh, as well as uh, minerals decaying over time um, to, you know, clay and uh, these minerals and alteration products have a tendency to uh, introduce more potassium into the sample, which can uh, make your ages look a lot older than they actually are. Since we're using uh, potassium, well, argon-argon dating, which is kind of a derivative of potassium argon dating. Argon, argon. I learned a little bit about that. When was that, yesterday? Yeah. Oh my gosh. That feels like a week ago already. It's crazy. Oh. Lovely. Thank during you so much for your patience, team. Uh, We're ready to go. Discussion. Oh. What was that? Is that during our geochemistry discussion? During our, I think that was it. Yeah. It's all a blur. <laughs> Okay. So 
science. Anything uh, you need to do here? <laughs> Anything you want to look at in the immediate area? No. I think uh, we're ready to go up yeah. slope. At a speed that's comfortable for the front row. We're at her. Ready when our OV is. Okay. Oh. Another shrimp, I think. Uh, what's our direction of travel here? Let's do zero six zero. Ready to put in a move? Uh, zero six zero. That seems like a great direction. You know, I might actually. Yeah, we can start with zero six. Uh, let's do zero seven zero. Does that change your plans drastically? Okay, nice. What's that? Zero seven zero is okay? Yeah. Okay, great. Sounds great. I'll put in a move. Bridge nav. Are you good to move, Karen? Yeah, I'm happy. Awesome, thanks. Let's and do uh, uh, three zero meters, zero seven zero. Zero seven zero. Speed oh. zero point two knots. Fishy? Yes. I love fish. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> I like seeing things that move quickly. I'm not going to have a lot of leash to look at it. Not a lot of coral oh, love man. today. Go for zoom. Things that move. Can okay, go can ahead and highlight this yeah, fish. Stop there. Cuskiel? Uh, it's Cuskiel. Okay, I'm out of leash. Go away. All right. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Be gone. Um, somebody was wondering how, uh, what is you the temperature at this depth? Okay. It is 1.7 degrees Celsius. So I think that's uh, probably like in the mid 30s Fahrenheit. And again, the depth that we are currently at is 2,934 meters below the surface. So just, just under 10,000 feet, or about nine, nine and a half thousand feet. There's a shrimp on the sea floor. Yeah, I see that. Yep. Let's go for zoom. Nice. Oh, there's uh, what's going on there? Where? I don't know, just looking at the back of the shrimp. It has some dark splotches on the back. I'm not sure what's going on. Is it common to see them resting on Go ahead. the sand like that? Not normally, yeah. but uh, there's a few different types of shrimp that could be down here. Could be one of the swimming shrimps. It could be uh, crawly. Oh. Go for zoom. We're still stretched out. We'll get there eventually. <laughs> yeah, we're pretty deep. It'll take us a minute to move. I'm just going to add another 50 yeah. meters to this. Otherwise, we're never going to get going. Bridge, Nav. It almost looks like there might be some kind of animal on its back. Can we back add another five zero meters to zero seven zero? gray part. That's my hypothesis. Go I wonder if those are like isopods. If the shrimp is maybe not alive and they're eating it. I don't know. That would be 
Yeah. Could all just could also just be just discoloration on the carapace. Um, but it's something we can check out. Okay, go for zoom. Okay, stop there. Still can't tell from here. The suspense is killing me. So it looks like just discoloration. What would cause that? Good question. It could be an old carapace. Hasn't molted in a while. Nice. Okay. So that, yeah, this looks like a caridian of some type. Um, very long rostrum, with spiny rostrum. Might help identification of it, but it's a. Uh, it's a challenge with these because a lot of some of the diagnostic characteristics are not always on the side that is facing the ROV. You might have to examine it. Go for zoom. I'm going to see, I'm trying to get in like more of a top down view, but it's not. The porch is kind of in the way. Uh, do you want to see it from the other side? Where's your, where's your ID sort uh, of view? Well, I mean, since there's nothing else to look at, really, in the immediate <laughs> area, um, pretty much as close as you can get to it. Okay. That's all the zoom I've got. I have a feeling that you know, there's enough distinctive characteristics that we might be able to get a, a genus on this if we take a close-up. Um, but we'll see. You're pushed all the way in? Yep, I'm all the way in. Yeah. Okay, go away. It's, sus it's suspiciously uh, let's see how, let's see how stable. Yeah, right. Sitting. How uh, quick he is to, or she, or whomever, is to scamper off when I go in close. Maybe it's sleeping. Could be. Shrimp count number four, by the way. What's that? <laughs> That's the shrimp count number four, by the way. Oh, yes. yeah. <laughs> Actually, I think it's six. If six? this counts. Oh, it's six? Oh, wow. I missed Get two. With it, Logan. That's on me, I know, I guess so. <laughs> this actually lets, lets us get a good look at some of this um, pebble and gravel mixture of the seafloor, too. Actually, it's seven. I don't know, I should start moving. Soon. Okay, awesome, thank you. Go for Zoom. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah, that's that's neat. So, oh, oh yeah. Oh. Wow. Is oh, that like okay. It's maybe. Oh. Is it? Is it multi right now? Huh. It almost looks transparent, right? Yeah. Wow. It's unexpected. Very spiny. Yeah, I don't think I've seen. I wonder Those if it's like a shot. heterocarpus. Uh, okay, go wide. Heterocarpus. Do you, science, you have what you need? I think we're okay there. Okay. Yep. Shall we? Thanks for the heads up on that, Nav. That's yeah. excellent. I'd also like Very to helpful. another DBL reset Yeah. when I can figure out. I mean, I would Where do it from that. It. That was that's the longest we're gonna stay in one spot yeah. for a while. Okay, let's just do it. Okay, reset. Okay. Yeah, I'd say it's probably heterocarpus, which is cool. Some of the larger deep sea shrimp we see down here. Pendalid, pendalidae. Nice. I had a very uh, memorable run-in with a um, heterocarpus. Few years ago. <laughs> Can you tell us about it? Uh, yeah, let's have the story. Yeah. Did you, Steve? <laughs> um, so we were, I was on uh, a, a different ship and uh, we were descending to the seafloor with an ROV 
And just as we are approaching the seafloor, we noticed there were a lot of midwater fish around us. Probably it wasn't a particularly deep dive, so they followed us, you know, followed the lights down to the bottom. And um, when uh, when we reached the bottom, there were some benthic invertebrates around, uh, and there was this large shrimp. And uh, it was a heterocarpus shrimp, and they are predatory. These midwater fish were basically, you know, just following the vehicle down. Some of them were sit slamming into the bottom, um, kind of unaware of, you know, the, that they were at the bottom. Normally they're pelagic. And um, we saw a viper fish that had um, floated down with us, and a shrimp came up, a heterocarpus shrimp came okay. up, swam up into the water column right in front of the camera of the ROV. Okay. Grabbed the fish out of the water, swam back down to the bottom, grabbed it, swam back down to the bottom, pinned it to the ground, and started ripping open its guts. Oh, what my. Wow. Uh, predation, predation in action. Ew. She's we have a sea pen. Yeah. Oh, I missed the story. <laughs> I know, I did too. I'm sorry. I didn't that was, what, that's it's okay. There's a video yeah, online. I'll I was send you the say, link. You showed us the video a few yeah. days ago. Yeah, I didn't like that shrimp. It was a mean shrimp. Yeah. Did so you have this? Yeah. Okay, thanks. This is a this is a sea pen, uh, Kofa Balemnon, I'm pretty sure. Nice. Uh, you want to go back to it? Um, I don't think we need another zoom. Okay. I think it's okay. I think we can make a genus ID from that. And Gabby, we've got about 100 meters before we start the incline, so okay. um, I think the layback will be okay. Okay, sounds great. Um, and I'll add another move unless science has any reason to pause. Nope. Uh, we collected a Kofopalumnon last year, as well as uh, there was a Kofopalumnon species that was collected in the Kingman Palmyra cruise earlier this year. Roger. So. Bridge, no? we have specimens from this area. Let's add another five zero meters to zero well, seven zero. We don't. They're at, deposited at the Smithsonian or uh, Harvard, Muse Harvard Museum of Comparative Zoology for request. Steve, are these snake-like patterns we're looking at kind of uh, bioturbation uh, formed patterns? Exactly. Bioturbation, does that mean it made by animals? Correct. It means, yeah, basically there's, um, Here's another sea if pen. we could, yeah, can we zoom on some of these other sea pens? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Go for zoom. Because there's, there's a, really a kind of an unknown or poorly known diversity in this area. It's the same species as before. Okay. I would say it's the same. Go wide. That's cool. I think this is these are the first sea pens we've seen, at least on this watch. Right? Yeah, first sent first sea pens uh, on this watch. Uh, yeah, I think so. I may I may have seen a rock pen on the first dive. Yeah. Um, I, I know on the last dive we didn't see hardly any except until the very very last uh, right. part of the dive. Yeah, Kofobalemnon has um, a few species. Video, go for zoom. Uh, and not many are known from this part of the Pacific. Is that yeah. another sea pen? Yeah, it's the same. Yeah, they're pretty abundant here. Wow. Yeah. This little sprinkling of sea pens. Go wide. So Brian M, who I'm pretty sure that's my brother. Hi, Brian. You're wondering what devices are we using to see all of this? Great, stop there. Um, so I'll start with the general. We're using two ROVs. The main ROV that you're seeing um, on channel one, or the camera that you're able to see on Channel 1. That's being uh, used by Hercules. So Hercules is one of the ROVs that we're using, but we also have Atalanta. 
and Atalanta is a smaller ROV that is about 30 meters above Hercules. You can see that feed on channel We're gonna two. Come up a little bit on the Delta. Uh, so you can see Hercules is much, much, much closer to the sediment. And so Atalanta just kind of keeps an eye on Hercules and makes sure that it's not about to run into anything or it also looks to see if there's anything that's about to run into Hercules. I forget how many cameras does Hercules have on it. Does anyone know that one? Um, I can list them if you want to keep count. Sure. I'll have a tally going on already. I don't know the number. Okay, got it. Okay, two stills. Um, a downward looking uh, wide eye. Um, the forward looking Zeus cam. Uh, two starboard cams. Uh, one port cam. Larboard cam. Yes, thank you. <laughs> one larboard cam. Is yeah, the port larboard. and larboard bubble, the same thing? Bubble, yes. bubble cam. Okay. Bubble cam, okay. Uh, and butt cam. And that's what's on Herc. All right, uh, so. Go for zoom. This might be one of the trace, <gasps> trace makers. Yay! Yeah, it's a holothurian sea cucumber. Go a little wider? Yep. This one was like Henson Athuria, maybe. I just love seeing it. You said those were some of your favorite, right? So. No, it's yeah. not that. Yeah, I, I do like them. <laughs> I mean, obviously, right? What's not to like? Yeah, what's not to like? <laughs> Would you classify this as enigma enigmatic? Okay, go on. I think they're enigmatic. Enigmatic mm -hmm. and charismatic. <laughs> Why, why, why do they do what they do? Off to the right, there's another and one. yes. This way, there's another one. Uh. <laughs> I love that arrow. Go this way. <laughs> By the way, I tell you. even do the. Oh, I love that. That's a good one. <laughs> uh, this is another sea cucumber. That looks like a spiky one, or it's like I got an awesome hairdo or something. A little mohawk. A little mohawk. Go for zoom. Yeah. That's something uh, well, that some sea cucumbers have. It's this, uh, it's almost it almost acts like a fin or uh, to help propel them. This one's gonna take off and see it. Like into the water column? Yeah, this one. <sighs> I'm so ready oh. for this. So this is a. Prepare for launch. <laughs> Elpidiid. Uh, we so have to that keep would, moving, guys, I'm sorry. That would be. Uh, yeah close relative <laughs> of the sea pig. So this would technically oh. be a, a sea pig. Hurry We're getting, up, it's cover. finally, we got a sea pig. <laughs> okay, go sea ahead, pig go. Okay. Got a scram, sorry. <laughs> sea pig count one. <laughs> Next time. Wait, I'm sorry, was that a sea pig? There's some depressions off to the left-hand side. I don't know what those are. Oh yeah, I see. No. <laughs> For a place with not much to see, I sure am falling behind here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, oh what's this? Are these the depressions? Yeah. There's a hole in the bottom of the sea. <laughs> There's a hole. This is where the drain plug and is. Bucket. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> when you've been here for long enough, you you know Go all the zoom? trigger words. <laughs> what? What's the drain? What's the what's the trigger words? A hole in the bottom of the sea. There's a hole, and I started singing that. Okay. There's a hole Go ahead. Yeah. So that's just a hole that's acu that's accumulated a lot of phytodetritus. Try to try to try to try to the equivalent of saying subaerial <laughs> in the biology. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for uh, translating that. Okay. <laughs> so, w can somebody translate subaerial for me? What What was that yeah. all about? I mean, <laughs> 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 okay. So I mean, land. I think yeah. it was yeah, yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. We were talking about rocks, and Nick was like, "Something, something, subaerial, something, something," and I was like. <laughs> So land, and then he was like, "Yes," and I was like, "Okay, just say land." <laughs> Literally land, <laughs> Literally poking out of the ocean. <laughs> so anyway, we've been <laughs> making fun of him for a subaerial. I think we were talking about sea mounts versus geos. Yeah, 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 that was it. So this is a uh, an anemone of some type. I'm not looking, or I'm not seeing the go wide. other structures 
that would make it a tube anemone. So it's just a uh, regular anemone. Although there is maybe a new C pen uh, morph we haven't seen nope. over there. Somebody is saying those holes we were seeing were aqua sasquatch tracks. Uh oh. <laughs> Aqua Squatch. Aqua Squatch. Aqua Squatch. Yeah. Sea pig and Aqua Squatch. I know, in the first. I like this diet. Wow. Seafoot. <laughs> Seafoot. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> and yeah, we've been seeing a lot of white or almost like transparent sea cucumbers down here. Somebody was very surprised to know that. So this is just a. It's, it was a perspective of the opposite side of the couple of them. It's the same same one we've been seeing. Okay, I'll set okay, there. Okay, go in. A small fish. Do you have time? Oh, yeah. We've always got time for fish. Did you not see it? It's a very, very small black uh, tadpole looking fish. Go for zoom. I'm going to keep adding steps here. Good. Get, get Good. Get into the edge. Is that a bridge now? Looks like Basazetus. Yeah. Let's add another five zero meters to zero seven zero. Yep, it's coming over Bass here. Zetus Cuskill. Nice, I got it. Okay, go on. Is it coming towards us? I saw another shrimp. I can add another tally. Speaking of tallies, um, earlier when Gabby was doing the uh, camera count, I tallied nine. So currently Hercules has nine different cameras in order to see all around. Combo, anemone, and sea pen. Can we uh, get any closer to the anemone? Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Well, these are the most sea pens we've seen so far, right? Okay, go for zoom. They're very small, but they're pretty abundant, it seems. Okay, yeah, anemone. Is that what you're looking for? Yeah, that's that's okay. Good. Okay, go ahead. Somebody is wondering about those holes that we saw uh, just a few minutes ago. Do we think maybe they could have been formed by worms that were like spooked by the ROV perhaps? Or something volcanic? The larger hole? The, the, the two those holes. The two yeah. holes. I doubt they're volcanic of origin. Um, we see, uh, so there's a lot of different animals that interact with the seafloor and some interactions can have long lasting impacts. 
uh, we've noticed, and there's been work published on um, beaked whales and their interactions with the seafloor. They often will come down and dive several thousand meters deep uh, and scrape or uh, dig uh, in the mud. Yep. That's cool. And so their scars uh, can leave marks that last a long time in the sediment because the sedimentation rate is so, so low here. So perhaps some old beat whale activity going on down here. Yeah, it's not clear. Yeah, we, there was some speculation about what they could be doing, yeah. either like cleaning themselves, you know, rubbing themselves, abrading, uh, you know, something on the outside of their skin, or maybe they're uh, probing the seafloor for in fauna or you know, food sources. Another shrimp. Somebody's wondering about squat lobsters. Yeah, have we seen any squat lobsters on your dives? They are so fascinating to me. You're not the only one. Um, yeah, we've seen some. We actually have a scientist um, aboard, uh, Paula. She is the squat lobster queen. She <laughs> knows everything about them and uh, very, very, very enthusiastic. We haven't seen any so far yet this dive, but yeah, we oftentimes do see them hanging out around or on coral. I think that we have collected a few specimens as well so far. And will we see fish at this step? Yes, we will. So we actually just saw one, so I think it was just one, um, a cuskiel just a few minutes ago. Is a sponge coming up here? I think so. Go for zoom. Perfect. Okay. Thanks for the training wheel zoom there, video. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> any, any more? Um, yeah, okay. Maybe I can hold it. Alright, so it's a glass sponge. Uh, On sediment? Yeah. They, they, Interesting. Um, there, it's, there's a lot of glass sponges that have these fibrous roots, almost like roots uh, structures it's for anchoring. This one looks like it's a euplectelid. Mm, go away. Uh, which tells us the family. But beyond that, it's pretty difficult. Uh, Euplectelids are n not really common in the sediment. Uh, most of the ones we see in that family out here are hard substrate attached. Um, but there's representatives of almost every family have the ability to um, anchor in these uh, soft sediment environments. Probably the most um, the most common ones we see, at least a little bit shallower, are the high alanomatids. They kind of, I, I think they look like toasted marshmallows on a stick, kind of stuck into the sediment. Yep. I think this is called bioturbation too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mechanoturbation. <laughs> Doing a little pilot swap up here.
So Steve, do you, would you like to explain bioturbation? Yeah, so um, well, there's a lot of animals that live in the sediments, um, but some of them may have different feeding strategies. For example, they need to create um, tubes that they pump water in, out of, you know, in currents and excurrent uh, tubes. And so bioturbation is the physical agitation of the sediment by biology. Yeah, thanks for the heads up. And most of the time we consider it bioturbation from the context of the infauna. Um, you might see some star-shaped patterns here from spoonworms um, or some smaller mounds from other maybe crustaceans or um, worms that live in the sediments. And uh, what's interesting about bioturbation is that these mounds and structures can last for decades and decades and decades or centuries. Uh, just because the rate of sedimentation here and disturbance is quite low. Yeah, and you can actually see them in the uh, rock record as well, uh, fossilized as uh, trace, uh, trace fossils. So basically all the squiggly wiggly lines that we're seeing on the ocean floor, that was, what do, what do you call bio bioturbulence? Bioturbation. Bioturbation, right? So as the sea cucumbers that we just saw and maybe some of the shrimp or whatever that lives on the ocean floor as they're moving around, they make those kind of squiggly designs. So I think we've seen one sea sponge so far this dive. Somebody's wondering, are sea sponges more closely related to plants, fungi, or animals? Animal, animals. Yeah. They are animals. Yeah, so sponges are animals. Um, not super complex. Aren't they like one of the earliest animals on earth yeah there's a lot of debate right now um, about that in the in the invertebrate uh, community invertebrate evolution community oh, can see we look at the sea star, star. <gasps> here we got a rock <laughs> and a sea so star. hey 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 don't distract from the sea star <laughs> <laughs> What kind of sea star is that? <laughs> Stand by on that uh, star and, and rock. We got it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Too much enthusiasm Slowly in the front row. drifting away. For okay. seeing interesting things. <laughs> I know. How dare us. <laughs> Uh, they might have turned them off temporarily. There is some fun going on in that front row, I tell you that. <laughs> okay, so uh, we, we are uh, starting to hit the slope here. Not hitting it, we're gently <laughs> hovering above it, gently traversing. Um, can we re-engage lasers also? Sounds very official. Lasers. Engage the lasers. Re-engage. Is that a... Uh, Gabby, do you have access to lasers? Or is that a... Uh, Re-engage lasers, please? Science has requested. Engage lasers. <laughs> pew, pew. Pew, pew. That's not what we're doing, you guys. That's not what we're doing. <laughs> I think I heard them. That's the that's the, the laser call. No. So we're using these lasers to measure. Um, <laughs> we're not we're not pew pewing anything. Down here. Hey, video. Yep. <laughs> Give her a zoom. Cool. Um, so I'm not sure she's on SPL. <laughs> uh, she's force talking you. Oh, okay. Cool. Sorry, I got distracted oh, by the um, laser talk. <laughs> Karen, your mic's kind of far from your mouth. That might be why he's having trouble hearing you. Hearing, yeah. I can now. Sound great. If it's possible, oh. um, 
we would like I to get now, a yes. really good zoom on this because oh. we're not going to collect it, but um, it could be helpful for identification of um, at least the genus. Uh, Karen, we're getting a request from science. Let me flip on your oh, SPL. Oh, thank you. Uh, so, Steve, that was a close-up on the on the sea star. Yeah, to Ready? the best of your ability. Okay. And did you say potential interest in a sample? No, I, I said, but no. well, we're going to get good imagery. Great. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just let me know when you're ready for zoom. Ready for zoom. Awesome. So this looks like a goniasterid, at least. Didn't say that much. Um. Oh my god. Oh, and a is little that a fish. Bird. Okay. Yeah. What fish is that? Oh, is, is that it a fish? Same type of shrimp that shrimp. we just saw. Is that a shrimp or a fish? Shrimp. Um, shrimp count? So it's not. <laughs> yeah. Shrimp count Thanks, at Bronwyn. 10. <laughs> Thank you, Bronwyn. <laughs> <laughs> Official data logger. Very shrimp important count. job. This one kind of looks like Circe Aster a little bit, but I'm sure I'll be corrected. That's uh, a great name. Yeah. There's a lot of different types of Goni Asterids, but in order to really identify them, um, we really need to be like up on it. Um, so we'll try to do it the best we can. But there are, there's basically a series of identifying diagnostic characteristics, both on the, cen on the center disc and um, on the arms. There are plates, uh, which are, can be useful. And some, sometimes, in some cases, spines as well. So. Yeah, I can try to get a little closer. Yeah. Yeah, echinoderm fans, for sure. Somebody's very happy to know that <laughs> we're taking a close look at this sea star, and we also saw some really awesome sea cucumbers, too. So again, these lasers, we're using them to measure the uh, items of interest. So they are 10 centimeters apart, so you can estimate that this okay, sea star is probably maybe 12 centimeters across. Something like That's that. That's really good. Thanks. Yep. Good. Okay. Okay. I turned to uh, starboard to keep you in view, so Thanks. Uh, I'm going to turn back so you know where you're headed. Okay. Thank you. So when we say echinoderm... 070. Um, 070. 070. We're talking about sea stars. And we're coming up slope, so I'm going to need you to step on it. Okay. We're actually doing a 060 now. Oh, okay. that? slowly stepping. Yeah, that squiggly oh, yeah. thing. Is that another eel? Are we tracking a line? Uh, tracking a line with the ship? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we've got about 10 meters left on the step. Okay, we're still stepping. So we need to come up fast, please. Okay, okay. I'll do. What's our uh, step step length? Uh, it was 50, but we're at 10 meters left. Okay. We've just been kind of stepping. Um, the 50 meter intervals. I've been putting them in as that, but we've not been slowing down in between. Okay. So that we were keeping momentum moving. Um, but I think now might be the time to get a little settled out as we're heading up. Mm -hmm. slope. No more moves. Yeah, I imagine yeah. Um, just giving you a heads up so you can plan accordingly. Uh, I don't see a lot of loose rock material here, but we'll probably want to take a rock soon uh, before it goes vertical on us. Yeah. Great. This will be the time. So, uh, so can you drop you a target too, saying this is where the rocky part starts? Sure can. <laughs> I don't have any better words for you. Maybe I bet my, my colleague can help. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is where the rocky part goes up. Uh, what you got, colleague? How would you and describe can you this? Can you head out? Uh, uh, get in front. Probably of some yeah, kind of sheet I flow, but it's still the covered best. with too They'll much give you sediment the most to leash. really determine anything. Sounds good. Yeah, I just I wanted to try to delineate the interval between the sediment, where it's you know, very much not rock, versus this part. Yeah. How about beginning of possible sheet flow? Okay, and Sam, to confirm, the ship is done moving. Ship is done moving. Correct. Okay. Awesome. Okay, how about beginning rock? <laughs> beginning rock works. <laughs> uh, that is so eloquently what? put. <laughs> beginning rock. <laughs> 
Okay, beginning of rock. <laughs> New beginning of rock. rock. There we go. It's okay. Possible sheet flow. And Classic notes. rock. Classic rock. <laughs> Classic rock. Uh. We strive for clarity in science. <laughs> I am noticing a lot of monopsids, uh, isopods, the so little like things with really long legs that are swimming by. I don't know if anyone else sees them. They're A little bit of sediment. Oh, I see a hermit crab over there. But you probably. Ah, oh, that's a big one. It looks big, at least from here. Yep. A hermit crab? Yeah, lower right. Yeah, it was lower right. It was uh, just past it a bit. Okay. Shall I stop? Uh, uh, so we're pretty stretched out again. So we're like okay. we're in a much better configuration now. But um, let's get you sort of back in the view of the uh, like a little bit back down slope and okay. sort of back out in front unless uh, unless they wanted to zoom on that hermit crab if we can yep I never thought of hermit crabs as being deep sea, but I mean, why wouldn't they? Carcinization. What did right? you say? I said carcinization. Carcinization. <laughs> Good circle know, back. There it is. Circle back. Right there. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yeah. Oh, right here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no worries. one of those things you see these from a mile away after you've trained your eyes to look for them this yeah. is a hermit crab I oh think, with a one of those zoanthid backpacks oh zoanthids yeah nice yeah. what are they called steve okay so Zoanthids? you want to get this zoom but also you're going to be fighting atalanta a bit so it's going to be a little bit jerky it's moving just because of the bit. stretch i'm going to come down okay. a bit Okay, and thanks. And hopefully that'll give you some more, but... Awesome, appreciate it. Oh, there's another, um, in the background, there's another one and of those... And I'll turn... Uh, pandalage, uh, shrimps a little bit saw. tail, too, which should free up some more for you. Nice, thank you. It's a fancy crab. See where the crabs with backpacks, homolid crabs? They are not, they're... No. Uh, oh, these are so cool. I think they're... Um, okay, for Zoom. Per... Uh, Parapaguridae, I think, is the family. Mm. Yeah, that's Parapaguridae, so cool. I think, yeah. There you go. Five rays. Holy shit. Parapaguridae um, is the family. Parapaguridae. What's the most um, zoanthids you've seen on the back? Okay, for Zoom. Uh, really, five. It's, it's yeah. strange, yeah. You don't see usually more than five. But we sampled one of these. That I, probably not this species, but. We sampled one uh, recently in the past year on one of the many cruises that are all blending together for me now. Wow. That's cool. It looks That's like cool. a glove. Like, yep. yeah. So is the hermit crab? Wow. I have so it many does questions. Look like a glove. It's, it's really weird. Yeah, it has a very strange texture when you, like, it's leathery almost. Yep. So is it in the anemone, or is it? It's, a ba it's like a backpack. It's pretty much exactly like a backpack. It just kind of sits in a ni nice little sheath within the zoanthid. Yeah. OK, yeah, because most hermit crabs, they have a shell that they're in, mm -hmm. like that they wear as a backpack. But this one's wear actually wearing an anemone it, as a backpack. It actually makes a lot of sense, um, because 
this backpack is not <laughs> not <laughs> not susceptible to dissolution yeah. uh, like a shell would normally be. Right. This depth. So this is really good. A very smart Great crab. Zoom. It knows what it's doing. This one is actually one of the most active ones I've seen. It's showing off its backpack, that's why. Yeah. It's very proud of it. Should be. Okay, thank you. All right, whenever you're ready. Uh, I think we're all set back here. That's good footage, though. Yeah. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Have fun at school. <laughs> <laughs> Over. Yeah, okay. science, are you so interested in getting in a rock here? No, I think the, the sediment load is a little bit too much, and uh, I don't see anything worth grabbing. Maybe a little bit upslope. We'll see a nice talus field. That was a crazy eye, uh, by the I way. think Gabby has that. Gabby, are you able to do still cam up on here? Sun, thanks. <laughs> I was hoping uh, somebody would make a SpongeBob uh, reference in the chat, and they did. I was coming home from Glove World back to Rock Bottom. If anybody knows that episode of SpongeBob, when, okay, I'll get into it later. I have time. I have time. Looks like we're starting to see some exposed rock, but not sure if any of it's loose at this point. Oh, a nice oh, glass bunch. That's yep. beautiful. Have a look. It tells you something a little bit about the stability of the rock, maybe underneath, that is not yeah. so uh, loose. Could be. Yeah. These sponges are not very heavy, so. As long as it's not prone to toppling over. Okay, presume if you want to. Somebody's wondering, how do we decide which things to sample? So I know for rocks, we're looking for angular. Cool. We're looking for loose mm -hmm. and crusty. Uh, crusty isn't ideal, but I mean, it's <laughs> Dang. we're, we're, we're going to find a lot of flour manganese crust everywhere on the ocean floor. All right, so what else are we looking for for a sampleable rock? Uh, we're looking for a holocrystalline ma matrix, uh, which we won't know until we cut it open, unfortunately. Uh, and that just basically means a nice fine-grained matrix, uh, fine-grained rock uh, that is fresh. And when I say fresh, I don't mean young, but I mean uh, unaltered, as I've said many times already. Uh, lacking of uh, any phosphorite alteration or clay mineralization. Unaltered. Unaltered rocks. All right, and then in terms of biological samples, uh, Steve, how do you decide which things to sample? So we do have, uh, every year, um, 
OAT sends out a solicitation to scientists ashore um, for each cruise uh, and helps uh, identify sampling goals and objectives um, and specimen collections that are needed in certain areas to help improve studies of biodiversity and other things we might want to know about the environment related to biology. Awesome, thanks. So most of what we're looking for uh, are recommendations from those specialists. Um, so if there are target species like corals and sponges that might be uh, ecosystem engineers, those are important um, and often most requested, but also in some of the mobile fauna um, and even zooms, uh, detailed zooms of fishes are, are commonly requested. Um, so th these types of uh, goal uh, collections are, are our main core goals, but there's also you know, the, the corollary of um, you know, making sure that we sample things that might be new or New species or new records or, or um, is the vessel stopped? Unique yeah, we're stopped. relationships uh, between species on the seafloor, like symbioses. Yeah, uh, science. Anything here that we want to? Well, no, there's really nothing here. <laughs> um, I, I <laughs> do you do you want to try poking anything, or we we can just keep moving? I think we should just keep moving. Uh, okay. Yeah, this looks like it's all solidified fairly well, and it's a bunch of icky sediment. Okay. Uh, RIV, good to go. Bridge nav. Let's do uh, five zero meter zero six zero. All right. So, Say again. everybody online, if you're joining okay. us now, uh, welcome. My name is Brittany. I'm a science communication fellow here on the EV Nautilus. We are currently in our third dive. We just hit bottom about an hour ago, I, th I would say. Uh, currently our depth is 2,853 meters below the sea, or below the surface, and we are exploring an unnamed seamount in the southwest boundary okay. of the Johnston Atoll region. So I got some messages of people who are wondering how they can access the depth and temperature data. If you go to our main webpage, nautiluslive.org, you'll see a little strip on the right-hand side that has some data. Go to the bottom of that strip and you click, I think it says like more information or something like that, and then it get, gets you to a site where you can see a lot. It looks very friable, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Friable? Crunchy. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, like when you when you put something in hot oil and yeah. Like a rock? No, not like friable like that. Friable is like uh, easily breakable. Okay, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, crunchy came from the crunchy squishy. Uh, yeah. Okay. Terminology. <laughs> so. In but the, never shiny. In the rock world, it's uh, friable or I don't know what's the opposite of that. Soggy? Yeah, can we zoom in on that um, wavy thing? Yeah, clear to zoom. <laughs> Friable. Technical crunchy, term squishy, there. Wavy. Oh, yeah. it's squishy. We're doing great. Uh, this is some type of worm tube um, covered in hydroids. A worm tube covered in hydroids? A tube worm, worm tube covered in hydroids, yeah. Okay. okay. Sometimes it's tough to tell if anyone's home. Uh, sometimes they can they can persist for very long periods of time. So, no way of knowing. I would say that someone's probably occupying this right now, but uh, they may be buried. It just it looks like the end of the tube is relatively hydroid free, which could indicate new growth. But that's just my supposition. Okay, good. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Karen, can I do a DVL reset? We'll um, just reset our cursor here. Yeah, sure. If you're in any autos, you're not in. Okay. No, yeah, I'm not okay. in any autos. Cool. It's just, is it just auto X Y then? That's the problem. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So for our online viewers, if you have questions or comments, I'm trying my best to keep up with them. Uh, you can write them in the chat that is below the video stream. 
and we'll try to get to each one if we can. Uh, a little, um, you know, probably a little either bathypathies or alternatopathies. That's the second one I've seen so far. Maybe we could try poking one of these rocks over here. If we're going to collect a rock, we need to give them a heads up okay. um, very, very early because there's a there's a, a lag. So, ah, uh, I see. Do we have any chance for a rock collection here? Or are we uh, moving? Uh, we are moving. Um, we could stop, but we're about halfway through a move, a 50 okay. meter move. Do we is it, how important is it to you? Not very important. Okay, let's okay. Going. Uh, yeah. ideal anyway. Cool, okay. So I'm assuming that uh, the underwater current around here is very, very weak, uh, just given all the sediment. That was going to be my my guess also. Um, we are, you know, I uh, there's a prevailing kind of deep water current that's coming from the north and east. And so that if that was true, that would put us kind of in the the shadow of that current mm. and putting the mountain between us and the current, which could enhance deposition on this side of the seamount, uh, which is, I think, what we're seeing here. And so uh, it will steepen, I think, gradually, but uh, I think this is a result of that. Hopefully when it gets steeper, it'll um, be more exposed. And it's kind of a double-edged sword because when we do have those exposed areas, that's where we tend to see more uh, ferro manganese crust, mm -hmm. uh, which is has its applications, but not so much for geochronology purposes. Some other worm tube. Would you like to stop or? No, no. Okay. Is that a sea pen as well? Uh, I think the thing on the left was a worm tube. What about the right? Uh, Can't see it unclear. Now. Steve, is there a distinct difference between a worm tube and a tube worm? Excellent question. Uh, one lives inside the other. <laughs> Lovely. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> nice and clear. Well, I mean, it, that's pretty much it. Yeah. I mean, tube worm is not a, you know, it's not a um, taxonomic, you know, name, uh, name or characteristic. Worms make tubes. Um, it could be either mucus tubes, or it could be sediment tubes, or it could be um, uh, like chitinous tubes. Um, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of other animals that live in tubes as well, amphipods in some cases. Um, so if 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 it's a worm tube, if I say worm tube, I'm probably mean it's it's a tube there may or may not be a worms inside but there's a there, at least in the deep sea world there's a connotation when you say tube worm um, 
that it suggests like a hydrothermal vent worm yep. or yeah. a cold seep worm. Yeah. But it's not always the case. There's other kinds of worms that live in tubes. Cool. Are these more worm okay, tubes? Okay, They look like worm tubes. Oh, oh there we go. That's a, this is called uh, an espidodiadematid urchin or uh, a deep sea long spine urchin. Okay. Oh, cool. Very long spines. Yeah. Bridge now. They're usually found on soft bottom Not like this. Five zero meter zero six zero. Um, I've had a little bit of trouble with the focus today too. I wonder yeah. what's up with that. Yeah, it's just a lot Maybe of uh, snow. Yeah, it's a lot of snow, it's a lot of sediment. Snowy. Espidodiodematidae is the family. Espidodiodematidae? That's yeah. a mouthful. Espidodiodematidae. Espido say it five times fast, Brittany. Espid uh, <laughs> Espido <laughs> Can't even say it once. Deep sea long spine urchin. Deep there sea long go. spine urchin. I can do that one. So you might be familiar with um, if anyone has ever gone snorkeling or scuba diving in the Caribbean, or uh, they may have seen the diadema. Diadema is a uh, long-spined sea urchin. Not sure. Um, I, d I think these might be very distantly related, but uh, a lot of the times. Um, the urchins, especially the Caribbean long-spined urchins, are uh, come out at nighttime. So if you're snorkeling during the day, you don't often see them. But mm -hmm. uh, this is yeah a different family. Looks like a daddy there long legs is. times nine. <laughs> <laughs> times like a hundred. Look at all those legs. Look at them legs. That's, look at them legs. <laughs> 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 Spines. I need to go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, actually, I stand corrected, right? Steve. They, they do have tube feet. Yes, and, uh, yep, and pedicillaria, um, but those are more microscopic. Okay, that's all the zoom I got. Man, oh, oh, so beautiful. Uh, but from what we can really understand about these, they're uh, detritivores, so they're eating the stuff on the bottom, you know, the uh, marine like snow Atlantis. debris and things like that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, has it been zoomed in this whole time? Yeah. Oh, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> yeah, we were just living in, in the sediment for a little while. Yeah, we're, we're um, trying to get better pictures with the triclops. Um, so we were messing with some of the settings, but oh, nice. it looks better now. Look at that bio tur bio turbulence bio turbation. Bio turbation. Yes. So we need to backs. start writing all these yeah. down, I like phytodetrital subaqueous <laughs> <laughs> bio turbation. That's amazing. Yeah. I love the designs though. It's awesome. Should make a bingo card with uh, yeah. all these <laughs> Seriously. We do actually have bingo cards on the Nautilus Live website under uh, in education resources, but they are more about uh, activities like ship move or sample collection versus obscure jargon. Fair. <laughs> Who are you calling obscure? <laughs> Enig enigmatic. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go with that one. <laughs> Okay, well, in the uh, in the spirit of all sample collection, we've got uh, about 20 minutes left of <laughs> our <Yeah>. watch, and <laughs> our uh, ship move will be ending in about 30 meters. Um, so that would be the time for a, a rock pickup if we do see something that we like. What was really interesting is that this this area of the dive track had the higher bias back scatter. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh. Uh, I'm sorry. What? Know. Oh yeah, of course. 
Would yeah. you like to explain uh, backscatter and its relationship to sediment, Steve? Uh, sure. So one of the tools we use uh, to plan dives that we collect from our multi-beam bathymetry is something called backscatter, uh, which when the sound hits the seafloor, how much is scattered versus how much is uh, returned um, to the ship that tells us the bathymetry data we need. So the backscatter in this area uh, is usually caused by things that have a high density, so uh, rock. Um, and sediment generally has a low backscatter. And uh, you can plot that out. And uh, this area, yeah, I suppose we're kind of in the transition zone, but we're almost to the slope where it starts to improve. Yeah, it looks like uh, we might be coming up on an area where right around here we might see some. Mm -hmm. Another urchin palace. and a shrimp and a worm tube, right? <laughs> worm tube. Worm tube. Tube worm. I, I don't know anymore. <laughs> <laughs> just I just I say that to myself daily. <laughs> <laughs> you know. was, was I think I think I know something, and then something else I see, yeah. and then I just I just don't know anymore. You just don't know. And that's okay. That's part of exploring. That means you're f finding something new. Yeah. The science you don't understand seven days a week. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yeah, we. I'm sure at some point in grad school, we all thought we we had it, we had it on lock, and then we graduated and we went on a postdoc life, or you go <laughs> into grad school from undergrad and your world uh, embiggens. <laughs> <laughs> that I can attest to. I knew nothing before I went to grad school. I was like, I thought I knew so much. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody in the chat said a while ago, I don't know if you will get this, but how cool is it that you are seeing and exploring parts of the world that have never seen the sunlight or been touched by human hands? Very cool. Yeah. So cool. Super and uh, Logan was there with me earlier today when we were cutting over, open the rocks from our last dive. I was there and too. We were and you were there too, that's yeah. right. And we were all taking pictures <laughs> together so and uh, uh, videos. Uh, but yeah, we were just talking about Sorry. how interesting it Can is I that go? we get to, you know, open these rocks that have never oh. been exposed oh. to oh. the surface, okay. the subaerial environment, <laughs> if you will. Like, stop! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> every opportunity I can take, I'm gonna take stop it. Stop it! Uh, no, but <laughs> I mean, these rocks are, you know, maybe up to 70 million years old, uh, and they've never, never seen the subaerial yeah. surface. Yeah, that was really, really cool. <laughs> <laughs> just had to get it in there one more time. <laughs> for the 12th time. <laughs> one more time. Maybe instead of a shrimp checklist, we yeah. should <laughs> We honestly need one. We yeah. need to be playing bingo in the van. <laughs> <laughs> Is everybody at home playing bingo? <laughs> yeah. I, I wonder if anyone's designed bingos on our watches. <laughs> there's, some very, there's some very distinct characters that you could do that with. I think we have a bingo sheet on our uh, one of our resources, right? Yep, we have a midwater bingo and a seafloor bingo, but they're very uh, activity General. focused, not okay. necessarily specific words or. Yeah, definitely people. wouldn't find some aerial on either one of those. Yeah, no, <laughs> <laughs> never. <laughs> no. Well, that's nice. Uh, yeah, so this is the second or third of these we've seen. This it looks like a uplift. Do we have any zoom on that? We're si sitting in a really nice spot. The ship has also stopped, so are it stopping currently? Got plenty of leash. Yeah, I think it's a euplectelid. It's just it's such low contrast. Ooh, oh, little bristle one. Yeah. yeah, that oh. tiny thing in the left corner. Yep. Yeah, there's a worm on the left hand side, and then I like there's it. probably a worm inside too. Uh oh, oh, woo, All right. It's a little scatter to it, doesn't it? Good, yeah, got good a shot. shimmy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They have, um, yeah, some some of the uh, polynoids have, like, almost paddle-shaped um, appendages. Kite? Yeah. Uh, I'm forgetting how to spell polykete. Uh, P-O-L. C-H-A-E-T? 
Thank you. Oh, what's that? It's struggling over here. Yeah. What is that? Another hermit crab? Oh. Like a, or something else? No, it's a hermit. Whatever it Whoa, is, it's, it's, scurry it's got an appointment or something. <laughs> Sleep for school. <laughs> I'm going to say hermit with one oh, and a half. It's a backpack. So yeah. yeah. Okay, for zoom. Nope. Wow. There I've go. never Let's seen it go so fast. The chase oh, is on. Wow, smoked. that is fast. <laughs> it is terrible. So this one this might have an anemone on the back, actually. Ah. Couldn't yeah. even. Just can't go to school with the same backpack, otherwise. <laughs> you know, it's you know, so embarrassing. You don't want to make that faux pas. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the ship has stopped, and we've okay. got, uh, let's say, 10 minutes left of our watch before the other watch is here. Okay. Um, we've still got a little swing on Atlanta, so we can hopefully try to find a rock. <laughs> Not it's not looking very <laughs> promising. <laughs> <They're not laughs> looking no uh, dateable rocks here. Oh, maybe just up with the. Yeah. Oh yeah. Top of the. Top they're right. they're uh, they're under the sand. Yeah. They're there. Yeah. Oh. They're definitely there. Yeah, what's that red? Uh, yeah. Oh, we might want to look at that. Let's have a look. Yeah. I There's think. another urchin too. Oh, I can't circle it. I don't know what that is. Trash. Looks like mm, trash. Might be. Uh, crushed can. Yep. Yep. Okay. Is it? Okay. Some kind of trash, plastic, maybe. Okay. Oil can. Do you want uh, targets for trash, or is that just c uh, collected in the? Uh, oh, sure. Why not? Put a target down. Electrons are cheap. Mm. I'm also logging. Yeah, do you, I mean, do you need the, no? Okay. Well, I got, I got a picture in one. We have a trash button back here. Right yeah. here. Okay, yeah. All right. Here we go. Rocks. Right at the end. Rocks. Let's get one. Rocks. Just in the nick of time. I'm sorry, did you say my name? <laughs> <laughs> Just in the Nicholas of time. Nice. Uh, wow. Anything pokeable? Science cam coming at you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to circle something, but I, I just don't see any, I don't see any pillow basalts. So other than this big guy or girl, oh I don't want to grab. And What's a uh, sponge? Oh, that's just a line. Yeah. It's, a, it's some kind of sponge, maybe a colophagus. There's a, there's a ledge here, maybe there's something. Yeah. Yeah, break off over there. Yeah, okay. <coughs> I don't think you're going to make it that far okay. to that ledge without a ship move. Okay, no problem. Which will take too long. Um, Is that possible I mean, to poke? Yeah, that's probably... That okay, yeah. I'll do it. So this is wee little tether. Whoa. Desperation grab at this point. Yeah, <laughs> and I can. I'll, I'll turn around. Another of these uh, parapagurus, parapagurid oh, uh, yeah. hermit crabs. They're everywhere. Wow. Oh wow. That is just so cool yeah, to really me. Really cool. It's a nice, uh, good picture here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Are we gonna poke at a rock? Yeah. Is that the idea? Yeah, yeah. Give it a little poke. See what happens. Okay. Hope for the best. I know our watch is ending soon. I just want to get some last-minute questions in that are coming. Um, 
Is there a way lay people can see pictures of the specimen collected after they have been prepared? Yes. Oh. Uh, one second. Yep. You can go to the, uh, at least for the biology, you can go to the Museum of Comparative Zoology's website um, and search, do their search tool called MCZ Base. Uh, and at MCZ Base, you can search in their special collections. Uh, there should be a, a, a drop down menu for special collections uh, and search the EV Nautilus um, specimen collection. There should be about 4,000, over I think over 4,000 so specimens. So when I so do far. this, the vehicle is going to move even more. Okay. Is it just out of reach? Oh, that's. That's a squishy rock. It's definitely attached. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's moving. I think it's it was moving? just crumb I think it was just crumbling there oh, in the front. Okay. It's just not watch a good the sign. sponge on your porch. Okay. If you start to see it break apart again, then we'll just pass on it. Let me know when you're stable. Stable. very attached. Well, thank yeah. you for trying. Mm -hmm. I'm curious uh, what the sediment um, okay. um, depth is here. It's good form for the uh, What do you mean? Hmm? Sediment the depth? depth yeah. Oh, on yeah. the slope? To yeah. Um, to organize a little bit. Um, okay. But we've still got we've still got a few minutes. Um, what else? I think I really would like to see the vehicle. Steve, off. before we Especially sign off, do you have time to answer one more question? Well sure. Right here. Um, if um, all the animals you see are under immense pressure, here? does that mean that their muscles have to be more durable than well, ours to move? Reach. One more time. So yeah. these are deep sea animals, right? And they're mm -hmm. under immense pressure. So does right. that mean that their muscles have to be more durable than ours in order to move in that type of pressure? No. Um, in fact, most of them have very fine or, or uh, you know, very small amount of muscle. Uh, yeah. Their bodies are largely uh, supported by a hydrostatic skeleton. So they don't have to worry about um, expending too much energy you know, their bodies, you know, the liquid in their bodies provide the rigidity against the surrounding atmosphere, surrounding atmospheric pressure. Cool. Thank you. So we're, we're looking for a rock. Um, off comes for a second. All right. So all of my online viewers, it is time for us to start to make our watch change um so again this was the four to eight crew we have the eight to twelve crew coming on right now and then later on it's going to be the twelve to four and so this particular crew um the four to eight will be back at four in the morning hawaiian standard time so if you would like to circle back around then feel free to do so or just keep it on all night why not uh, but thank you all so much for joining us on this exploration. Thanks for asking such wonderful questions. And in just a moment, you're going to be hearing Stephanie. Stephanie's not ready yet, so I'm still here. <laughs> what do you think? Maybe... I'll park it over here. 
There's just more rocks. More to choose from. <laughs> All right, someone's asking, where is the control room? It is on the ship, on the EV Nautilus. Um, so how do I describe it? It's like mm -hmm. upstairs, outside, inside of some... <laughs> I don't know, I guess like shipping containers that have been transformed into this really, really awesome, magical place that we now call the control room. You might be able to see it if you take a look at a picture of the EV Nautilus. If you see a big white box towards the top of the ship, that's where all of us are sitting right now. Okay, now I'm leaving, <laughs> and it's gonna be Stephanie coming up um, along with the others for the eight to 12 crew. Thank you all so much, and hope to see you again in a few hours. Hey! Good evening, everyone. Hello. Okay, Trevor, once everyone gets settled in, let's try something completely different. We're going to go down slope for the whole dive. <laughs> yeah. Roger that. No, let's, uh, let's try a push course to see how thick the sediment is anyway. What, here? Yeah. I mean, You're crazy. Off to the side somewhere. Let's just see what's there. 
Can we to take off and reland, or? Well, what, what, get yourself situated, whatever you want, and then I'm we can. Uh, I'm situated. Uh, we can do it. In, it's it's slopey. You, you know, it's slopey. Yep. All right. Well, you're in charge. Yeah. Unless I mean, unless you think you can grab one of these rocks here. Nope. They're not too welded. I think they're already welded. I can I can do that. Give her a try, though. Yeah, just give her a try. What could go wrong? Okay. That's science. <laughs> Where are we headed? Nowhere fast. <laughs> Where, where would you like to go, Elias? Yeah, the next few points. Like, I mean, after taking some samples here. I mean, you, you've been in charge most of the navigation, <laughs> so you're the one who should have an idea what you want to do. That's <laughs> what every navigator says, the next waypoint. <laughs> exactly. Well, what do you think about that? Oh, they're ugly, but we'll see. Yeah, why not? Just grab one, just, just for rock-type identification. We can always... Ooh, what's happening here? Oh, I don't want to do that. Hold on a sec. This is what's going on. Mind if I secure tilt and see if that helps? Do what you think is best. Thank you. Oh, oh someone's got a live please, mic. Who's that? Please mute your mic before you bang Goodness your headset Goodness gracious, around. I can never hear again. Uh, hmm. I'm gonna do something crazy. Sorry about the mess. I wouldn't trust Gabby booby trapping this, you know. I'm finding him now. This is Karen. Karen booby trapped it. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just getting set up. <laughs> okay, well, there's a, s a slight current here. Yeah, it's, it's going right to left. Just wanted to do that for some science knowledge, that's all. That's it. Yeah. All right, let's try that again. That's not the one. They're, they're down farther. Okay. I think. No, 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 no. <laughs> I just couldn't see those ones, so I'm <laughs> be patient. I mean, could you reach the one that's just up out of. Just where? Just up out of reach. Uh, just up out of reach. The one that's out of reach? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I don't think I can reach that one. Who made such a mess? Who did that? <laughs> Can you put bubble on gauges, please? Uh, one moment, please. Oh, it's already there. Roger. This must be a whiteout with the <laughs> marine snow. Can't see. How you like them gauges? Yeah, they're great. Useful and helpful. The two things I like for most in gauges. And can you zoom out on the gauges a bit, please? Good there. Oh, of course, it ran away. I would like to zoom in a bit. Right there. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, is sorry, that Sorry, sorry, Dave, I'm talking to Bubble. Bubble controller. Um, that's probably good. We'll find out when the dust settles. Roger if it ever that. does. Rob, I think it might be best if we move. Okay, roger that. Go ahead. You okay with that? Yeah. Okay. If you Not see a, a happy rock someplace, then grab it, then we can we just can do a punch in and see what the sediment's like. Also try the push core. That's perfect bubble view right now. Thank you. The ominous craft just hanging out front. Ooh, what about that dark one off to the left? Yeah, let's do that. Okay.
rock. Can you come up on Delta, please? What does the color of the rock, what does it tell us? The, the color, like, you know. Well, I mean, it's hard to tell anymore. It just means there's probably a little sediment on it. Usually you would think if it's darker, it's fresher, but, I mean, these are all covered with manganese. I see. Ah. How do you drive this thing? Now that I've done my website update, do you think we should do some introductions? Let's do that after we do the sampling. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I didn't even know. No, of course. Oh, oh, maybe. Oh, come on. I thought I saw a wiggle. I did not. You want me to push core while I'm here? Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. There's a critter going through the screen. Um, a it seems to be a mice shrimp. Okay. You know it's a shrimp. Add it to the count. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amber from uh, UNLV was asking for a, a sediment thickness check, but I thought we'll see what we can do here. Uh, confirming no cores have been taken yet. Is that right? No, I was muted. No cores have been taken. Thank no samples whatsoever. No samples whatsoever. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Hi. Can I make a bubble on craft, please? Roger. Give me that again in just a moment. Any particular guesses there, Rob, of where it's going to be the best? I, it's just dead center? Yeah. Right where you put it is going to be the best guess. Roger that. Thanks for the vote of confidence. Well, here we go. Uh, 2.5 inches. Ooh. Oh, slightly more. Uh, I'm going to pull out right now. That's all we got. Keep it? Yeah, let's keep it. See if I can. Oh, I'm not holding my breath. It's quite sandy. Yeah. I was just hoping that it might be a little finer material on the side here instead of on top where it's getting winnowed. It is not empty yet. I'm going to keep going. Keep going. You can do anything you put your mind to. Absolutely not <laughs> this. You can do it. <laughs> oh. It's in there, but it's very disturbed. Yeah. Well, I mean, people just, I mean, we got an idea how thick it was where it at least had resistance. Yeah. And uh, people are just looking for the cut top uh, centimeter or so anyway for the critters. Okay, hopefully that's so uh, it enough. it may suffice. Okay. Push core taken. Great. Thank Just you very much. Confirming gone. that that was push core number one. Correct. Thank you. Can't see. Okay. What's the number on that? Data? 45. 45. Thank Zero you. 45. Thank you. Am I good to move along then? I'm good. Anybody else? Anybody have any issues? Okay. All right. Well. Onward and upward. Ooh, we got a flappy tape on the uh, float. Yes, indeedy, we do. <laughs> That's neat. Um, I'm going to put this away. That's the wrong button. There we go. So would you like to start the ship moving now, or what would you like to do? Yeah, let's keep going uh, up the slope. And okay. If, uh, Roger. And we're going to go to waypoint two and then three. How far is waypoint two from us right now? Um, it's um, about 1,500 meters. Yes. Oh, OK. And yeah. what are those contours? 10 meters, like vertical. Just 10, 10 meters? meters? Yeah, vertical. Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. 
So we're only going to come up like 60 meters over the next thousand. It's really, really, really flat. That doesn't sound right. That's, I, I would have guessed 100 or 50. Yeah, they're not 10 meters. Not 10 meters, Dwight? No. The contours in, um, in vertical difference? Vertical? Yeah. Yeah, they made, a, they made the map differently this time. Uh, Rob should know, or it's in the dive plan. I'll have to check. Oh, really? I'll but check Rennie quick. just came in just now and he confirmed it's 10 meters. Rennie just confirmed it's 10 meters? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So let, me, let me check. I wonder if Data Lab is on. It's just going to dictate how fast we go up the slope, is all. I mean, we started at 29 close, it's going to be about 17 at the top, so. Yeah, okay. If there are 12 that, there, those got to be 100 meters. This, this, yeah, 100 this, this meters? Is. Okay. Yeah, I think they're 100 meters. Yeah, the, the dive plan says 100 meter okay. depth. 100 meters. Mobiles. Okay. All right. On the well, last page. Let's start Same with steps. Okay, yeah. Up the let's, slope. let's just do that while I'm I'll it's gonna be, that. be a pretty steep. We're gonna do steps, not tracking. Steps, yep. Let's do 50 meters, yep. Thank you. Can we, can we zoom on that? I'm not sure if that's something or nothing. Yes. Great, thank you. Okay, video, please zoom on this thingy. A stock? Yes. Seems to be a um, worn tube oh. with hydroids on it. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank thanks. You. Come on. How's that winch wrap? That's oh, fine. It's gone. Okay. Because we're we paid out. Awesome. <coughs> um. Yeah. We'll start with steps, and then if I can keep up, then we'll move to tracking a line. Okay. But just play it safe for now. Okay. Okay. Are all of our ducks in a row? Pigs in a blanket? All of our pigs are in a blanket. I have one more question. Uh, Rob, do you want me to be staying well, this close to the sediment, or do you want a more eye in the sky view? You're muted, so if you're talking to oh, me, I can't muted. hear you. Yeah. Do you want to get closer or be farther back, Paula? Um. Maybe a little bit closer, but if uh, whatever is best for the whatever current. is best for science. Yeah, let's stay close to that. That it looks like this. You know, the, the biology is rel relatively small here. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. The geology, it looks like it's just pretty much sediment with sheet flows and, and blocks Sounds here and there. Good. So, can I get a bubble on front porch, please? Roger. Yes, we have the 100 meters contour. 100 yeah. meter, thank you. Yeah, just contour. Ooh. Ooh. We got a sandy front porch here. Yeah. It's because somebody drove into the sand. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I'm the somebody. Do you want us to have the 10 meters, or this is just good enough? Oh, great. No, it's fine. Just wanted to know what I was looking at. Oh, okay. Nice. Hey, looks like Deck Face got a nose. What is oh that? Oh my god, it does have a nose. Rudolph. Rudolph. 
That's Deck Frog. Mm-mm. Deck Frog. And get a chance to zoom out of this little detritus in there. Yeah, sure. I I'm think we saw that on the uh, the big bridge we were here last year, the stuff falling in. Yeah, okay. I'm at the end of my leash right now, but we'll we'll get there. Well, at some well point. there's there's a, another batch down here too. Totally, yeah. I'm very curious. Curiouser and curiouser. There's a Okay, my ducks are actually in a row right now. Okay, it looks like there's a big thing just up top. Yeah, I see that. Top. It could be a stick. sponge. Oh, sponge? The okay. suspense is killing me. I just see the bottom of it. If only someone would drive forward. So. You want to zoom in there, Dave? What do we got? Is this detritus? Yeah, I, I guess it's not detritus. It's like just sand that's falling over the edge. It's different sand, yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Hmm. There it is. Ooh, oh, there it is. Nice. Oh, All right. I revealed too early. <laughs> <laughs> That's another, That's a big, another big one. one. All right, after we look at that, if nothing else happens, we'll do introductions. We can uh, do another ship move. Okay. Let's zoom in on this thing, please. Nice. About 20 centimeters across, nice. Yeah, and if, and if you after this, you can pan to the left, looks like there may be a little squat or a, a something on this rock right there. And right here. Yeah, a little red thing? Yeah. Go ahead, tighter if you got it. That's all you get. What is that? Hmm. Is it a worm, antlet, or is that a little baby? Uh, Maybe baby auditorium? I don't, yeah, I don't like know. Yeah, a baby halothurian, the way it's still mm -hmm. like is. All right, come wide, please. In that case, it looks like a halothurian. That's really small and far away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, welcome to the 8 to 12 watch. I'm Stephanie, a natural science and children's book illustrator and science communication fellow for this watch. Um, if nothing else amazing we see in the next, like, you know, minute or so, can we do introductions? Front, back row? Back row first. Rob. Okay, I'm Rob Colony. I'm uh, the watch leader for. 8 to 12, also the geologic lead, and uh, I'm a researcher from the uh, Graduate School of Oceanography at the University of Rhode Island, and just kind of add an extra little twist to the, the introductions. Ooh. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Paula. I'm a postdoctoral researcher at uh, Harvard University, the MCC. I'm studying mainly uh, crustacean uh, decapods. Uh, in particular, I'm interested in squat lobsters, and I'm helping with uh, biology here. And there's a, there's there's a fish. fish. Cusk eel? That's what it looks like. Is that your name? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Cusk eel. No. <laughs> I'm Ronke Harris. I am a science manager in training on board the Nautilus and off the Nautilus. I'm a PhD student at the University of Victoria in Canada on the West Coast, and I study hydrothermal vent microbiology. Before we hit the front row, we have like a little guest voice. Oh, Maddie, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, cool. It's kind of weird in this uh, belt pack. Hi, I'm a uh, Madison Dapsovich, I'm communications lead here aboard at EV Nautilus. I'm a science reporter when I'm not on the ship. Um, and the 8 to 12 watch just had so many dad jokes that I wanted to join in and see if I could contribute a couple. Good Robbie. thinking. <laughs> a new challenger <laughs> enters the arena. Oh. Here we go. More <laughs> like dad is. She's sitting right over my left shoulder. I know, I'm just breathing on your neck. Hearing over you, waiting. 